Hey, what's going on, saints of God? Can you believe it? It is November, and we are here for our midweek motivational. I pray that you have been seeking God these past few days. I pray that you have continued to just seek Him out in new and exciting ways, and that you are hearing His voice like you've never heard His voice before. Well, like I said, it is in fact November, and we are going into this season of thanksgiving and with that being said we're also going into a new theme for the month a theme that is called thankful for the promise saints have you ever had a promise fulfilled in your life have you ever had someone promise you that that something would happen or or uh, an event would take place and that promise comes through and you remember how great that promise felt or even if you had given a promise and when you give a promise and it goes through how you saw other people feel and even how it felt to be able to fulfill that promise well saints we're going into this season understanding that a promise has been made to us the saints that God has called the the, the, the saints that he has delivered from this world and I tell you this the promise that God has made the promise that he has made to you the promise that he has made to me is a promise that will never be broken and again going back to that 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 topic of the Magnificat the song that we're singing in our hearts because of that fulfilled promise that he made so long ago a song that we sing so loud that allows us to be able to proclaim and magnify the Lord all the days of our life. And so in preparation for this new theme as we go into it, it brings us to Genesis 12 beginning at verse 1 going through 7. And it tells us, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in, in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. I want you to see something. I want you to take note of something. In all of this, it is God that is saying that he will be the one that does the work. He is the one that will bring forth the blessing. He is the one that will bring forth a great nation through Abram. He is the one that will make Abram's name great. And it is through God himself that Abram is going to be able to be what? A blessing. And so it is God that is doing the work. It is God who is making the promise. And because it is God that's making the problem, promise, it is God who will be faithful to fulfill that promise. And it goes on to verse 4. It tells us, So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And saints, I need you to understand something. Sometimes when God speaks, or, 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 or at least most of the time when God speaks, we should just go forth and do what it is that God has called us to do. Notice how as soon as God had spoken, Abram went forth and did as the Lord had spoken to him. Sometimes we have a habit of deliberating. We have a habit of trying to reason, if you will. But sometimes we just have to understand that when God makes that promise, we just have to go and do what it is that he's called us to do. And saints, he is 75 years old. So don't ever think that you're too old or even too young to start the work of the ministry, to do what it is that God has called you to do. In verse 5, it says, Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all of their possessions which they had accumulated, and the persons which they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, Thus they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem to the oak of Morah. Now the Canaanite was then in the land. 
Saints, sometimes we go forth and we see the promise that God has placed before us. We see the promise that he has made and it may seem like someone else is living the promise. It may seem like there's someone else where it is that God has told you to go. But saints, God hasn't told you to be concerned with who's there or, or, or any obstacles that are in the way. God doesn't want you to be concerned with the processes. God just wants you to be obedient to the call, obedient to the promise. Because when God makes a promise, he is faithful to see it through. It ends at verse 7. It says that the Lord appears to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. I, I love this promise that God makes because Abram is staring at the land. He's looking at the promise that God has placed before him. And I'm sure in his mortal mind he may be thinking... If that's where God wants me to be, why are there other people in possession of my promise? But God reiterates to him. He reinforces the fact that I have made a promise to you, says the Lord. I have made a promise to you and I will give you this land. This land belongs to you. And so saints, today you, you may be watching this and, and you may be thinking about a promise that God has made to you years ago, months ago, weeks ago. It doesn't matter how long ago that promise was made. If God made a promise to you, he will see it through. Why? Because he is faithful. He is faithful to complete the work in which he has started. And I love at the end of this, it says that he, Abram builds an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Saints, when God fulfills the promise in your life, when, when, when he does what it is that he said he was going to do, be careful. Sometimes when the promise comes through, we begin to build altars to ourselves as if we had anything to do with the fulfillment of that promise. Saints, when that promise is completed, when it comes through, remember the altar is to be built to God because it is God who has done the work. It is God who has done the promise. And because it is God who has done the promise, he is the one that should receive all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Again, why? Because he is faithful. So saints, are you thankful for the promise today? Are you thankful for the promise that God has made to you in your life? Are you singing that song, that Magnificat in your heart? And are you proclaiming and magnifying the Lord the way that you should day in and day out? If you are not, here is the beauty of the promise. He is faithful to give you a new day. And we have the ability, even if our past doesn't look that great, we have the ability to look forward and give glory, honor, and praise to our God because He is due those things. And it is going to bring a whole new light to what it means to worship God. So saints, proclaim and magnify the Lord today and hold on to the promise that he has made to you because he will be faithful to complete what he has started.